we want to say welcome in to everybody tonight joining us wherever you may be on this beautiful Wednesday night. We just trust and we just hope uh, that, uh, that God is being good to you today, which I know that he has, because God is always good. Can you say amen to that? And we want to say welcome in uh, to Wednesday Night Live here at Bethel Church, wherever you may be. You, you notice Pastor Dave's not here with me tonight. Uh, he had an um, issue come up, and so he wasn't able to uh, be with us here live. Uh, but we are glad that you're here, and we're glad to see everybody that joined us here in the sanctuary tonight. Give me just an opportunity, if you will, just to make uh, a couple of announcements if I can. Uh, I want to make sure that the church is aware of a few things going on uh, within our congregation so that you have all the information that you need and can make decisions for you and your family. I got a call earlier today. There have been some confirmed cases of the coronavirus in our Spanish congregation. Let me repeat that because I don't want you to already start freaking out. In the Spanish congregation, we've had some confirmed cases of the coronavirus. Now, uh, let me just reassure you that before every service and before uh, every time we come together that we spray and wipe down everything, every doorknob, every light switch, every toilet uh, lever, every uh, uh, water faucet, we uh, wipe down and spray with Lysol. We even spray all the chairs down. So I, I don't have any concern right now that there would be a reason to think there would be cross-contamination. If something changes, I'll be sure to let you know. But let's be in prayer for Pastor Guido and the folks there in our Spanish congregation that the Lord will be with them and, and help them and, uh, and, and touch their bodies. Can you say amen to that? We want to thank everybody for your giving and uh, for what you do to support the church. Let me just throw it on the screen. For those of you watching at home, uh, you can text this number right below me. And that will send you to a secure link where you can continue to support uh, Bethel Church uh, and the things that we're doing for the kingdom. Uh, I want to tell you, we've had great response this week of folks giving online. So thank you for that. And we appreciate you continuing to give. Maybe you're not a text to give kind of person. If you have the PayPal app, you can open it up and you can go right there to Bethel PCG and you can give that way. We also have some folks mailing it in. You can mail it in 2414 Lauder Road. Houston, Texas, 77039, and, uh, and it'll get here. We check the mail every day. So, again, we want to say thank you so much uh, for your giving and for what you're doing uh, in the kingdom of the Lord. Uh, excited to see you guys tonight and excited to have this beautiful uh, crowd on a Wednesday night as we get into the word of the Lord tonight. I want to go back and talk about uh, some things that have been going on in our nation over the last 48 hours, which I know uh, if you're like me, you've been watching, you've been paying attention. I probably stayed up a little too late last night paying attention. Can anyone say amen to that? I know I stayed up really late last night just trying to figure out what's happening and what's going to uh, go on in our country. So um, I, I don't want to talk necessarily about uh, the presidential election. That, to me, I've, I've lived through Republican presidents, I've lived through Democratic presidents, and every time I continue to live, right? Amen? Uh, there hasn't been a situation yet that uh, has been too hard uh, for me to handle. But I wanted to take you uh, to the west coast of the United States, and I wanted to inform you of something that took place last night that a lot of people didn't notice on their radar and I wanted to show you what it is saying about the direction that our country is heading and why I believe that it's important that we, uh, as children of God, be prepared because, come on, church, we are in a spiritual warfare. We are in a spiritual battle. And I want to take you to the West Coast and read to you something that happened and that was voted for and is now legal in the state of Oregon and, uh, and I'm just going to read you a little bit of this article out of the New York Times uh, that says this. The march to decriminalize drugs moved further across the nation on Tuesday, despite continued federal prohib uh, prohibition. Uh, Oregon became the first state to decriminalize small amounts of cocaine, heroin, heroin meth, and other drugs. In New Jersey in South Dakota, in Montana, and in Arizona, 
voters decisively passed laws legalizing recreational marijuana. We talked about that a few months ago here, what was going to happen with the legalization of marijuana as it continues to spread across the country. Cannabis is now legal across a large block of states in the West, from Washington down to the Mexico border and well beyond. Um, Cannabis was also on the ballot in Mississippi, and if all of the marijuana measures pass, then marijuana will be legal for medicinal use in three dozen states, three dozen states, and recreational use. This is the other uh, shoe that we have to watch. Recreational use will be allowed in 15 states. We've talked about recreational use. We talked about it here on the Rick and Dave show a few months ago. Uh, It was probably the most packed crowd we've ever had on a Rick and Dave show. I remember that night. This place was wall to wall because everyone had an opinion on the medicinal use of marijuana. And, uh, and, and I made that, the statement then, and I'll make the statement again tonight. I believe that the Lord knows our heart. Come on now. And when people say, hey, I have a medicinal use for this, then the Lord is going to know if that's legitimate or not. I believe that, um, I believe that we should not put uh, intoxicating agents in our body as believers of God. I I don't think uh, that we as believers of God should be partaking in alcohol. I don't believe that we as believers of God should be partaking in drug use, recreational drug use, you know, medicinal. uh, We don't want to rehash that again. But what, uh, what was interesting to me is Oregon now makes possession of small amounts of what has for a long time been considered harder drugs Now it's a violation similar to that of a traffic ticket. So if you're caught with meth in Oregon, now it's a traffic ticket. If you're caught with cocaine in Oregon, now it's a traffic ticket. And it's no longer punishable by jail time. Um, The law also funds drug addiction treatment from marijuana sales taxes. I'm I'm actually okay with that. I think if uh, you're going to tax uh, marijuana, then uh, fine, that's a good place to put some of the money is helping people get off their drug addiction so at least that part of it i feel like they they did right um possession of larger amounts could result in misdemeanor charges and then some cases that rise to what is considered a commercial level could still be charged as felonies in other words if you had enough on you to where uh the police uh could make a case that you were trying to sell it but here's another thing um that i wanted you to see Uh, Oregon voters also legalized uh, psilocybin, which is known as magic magic mushrooms for people 21 and older. So uh, a lot of proponents or people that support this, they say that the move would allow the drug to be used to treat. Now, Now, I want you to see this. Uh, the whole reasoning of why they're allowing it to be legalized is this. They, they're claiming it's going to treat depression and anxiety and uh, other conditions. And so that's why now the legalization of drugs in Oregon. Uh, and so pretty much now uh, all drugs in the state of Oregon are now legalized. And uh, I began to think about this and I began to really uh, think about the scripture uh, and, and it really came to my heart and to my mind and, and made me understand that we are in spiritual warfare. Can you say amen? There's a lot going on around our country that uh, as believers should be raising a red flag for us. And I'm not even talking about politics. I, honestly, I could care less about politics. Uh, there's not really many politicians that have ever made my life better. Well, you know, I'm just I'm just being honest with you. So I don't put much stock in the political side of things, especially on the national level. Our local politicians do more uh, in our day to day life than, than the national ones do. But where I do pay attention and where I do put stock is when states across the country start passing legislation and start passing measures like this uh, that, in my opinion, are completely correlated to the moral decay of the United States as a country. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a definite sign of the moral decay of what is going on in our country. So 
I, I wanted to uh, talk to you tonight about putting on the whole armor of God and leaving it on. Come on now. <laughs> because we are under uh, severe issues in, in our country. Um, you ever see on TV the guy named MacGyver? Anybody ever watch MacGyver? All right. You may like MacGyver. MacGyver, if you don't know who MacGyver is, he was, I can't remember his real name. Anybody remember his real name? What is it? See, Amber, I, I figured Amber would know. Richard Dean Anderson. She likes MacGyver. MacGyver was um, a guy who had an uncanny ability to get out of harrowing circumstances with mundane objects. In other words, if he was, you know, locked in a car speeding 100 miles down the road and the brake was stuck, he'd say, give me a paper clip. I got to get out of here, right? And somehow MacGyver would always get out of it. He would always defuse the bomb with a stick of bubble gum and uh, a weed that he found on the side of the road. So uh, Mac Mac MacGyver would escape from a deadly trap. Uh, all he would need to save the day is his knowledge of science, a few paper clips, and some chewing gum. And that is MacGyver. We know that show is, I hate to inform you, that show is fiction, in case you didn't know. But sometimes it would be nice, don't you agree, if we could save ourselves from life's problems and life's attacks by quickly grabbing whatever is near us and creatively crafting tools to free ourselves out of troublesome situations. And thankfully, I want you to understand, and we're going to study this tonight, and I want you to please just pack it away in your heart and let it be a part of your day-to-day -day walk as we leave this place tonight. But God has already given you everything that you need to overcome any situation that you'll find yourself in. God has already equipped you with the tools that you will need to stand strong in the face of the attacks that are going to come against us. And church, I'm not a doom and gloom, but those attacks are coming. You already have everything that you need. And better than any tool that you can create on your own. Uh, my, I see my buddy Ernie here tonight. I love Ernie because Ernie's very resourceful. Uh, and and any time something here at the church breaks, Ernie says, I can fix that. And Ernie will bring in material. Billy Christian is a lot like this. He'll bring in material, and I'll be sitting back, and I'll be looking at these guys thinking, how in the world is Billy going to fix a hole in the door with a paint stick and I can't even remember what else you used, Billy, but I, I thought, how in the world? But Billy and, and, uh, and Ernie got the job done, right? And so even more important than the tools that we can find for ourselves are the tools that God has already given us, our spiritual armor and our weapons. And we got to understand and see that life is a battle with Satan coming against us. But I'm guaranteed victory tonight. You're guaranteed victory tonight when you trust in Jesus Christ and the tools that he has provided. I know there's a lot of animosity. We're not going to get off into the election tonight. We're not going to go down that road. But I know people that are wringing their hands today. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing we do every day, regardless of what happens. Whether it goes one way or the other by tomorrow night, it doesn't matter to me. Because guess what? I still have to do the same thing on Friday that I have scheduled now. Nothing's going to change for me, right? But I know and I'm seeing this on the West Coast and what's happening over there. And it's going to start trickling, all right? This is how it starts. Legalization of marijuana started in one state. And now it has spread to, what did I read earlier? Recreational use was, what, two dozen, three dozen states. And then the, the, uh, the I'm sorry, recreational use was 15 states. Medicinal use was three dozen states. So it started with just one state. And, and, then, and then it slowly but surely started creeping. And, and then we were like, oh, well, it'll never happen in Texas. But lo and behold, now uh, we're wondering, uh, this is a different Texas than it was 15 years ago. This is a different Texas than it was even 10 years ago. So who knows what's uh, going to happen. Uh, but I want to take you uh, to Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus. It's Ephesians chapter 6 if you want to turn there. And before we read, I wanted to ask you this question. Uh, what are some tools of the trade that you depend on most days? What are some tools of the trade that you depend on in your life, spiritually, 
what are some tools of the trade that you depend on in your life on most days? Since this is a short answer, you can just let me know from where you are and I'll relay it to uh, our online listeners here. What are some tools of the trade that you use every day? Go ahead, Amos. Prayer. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. A- anybody else? A tool of the trade. Reading the word. Jenny, go ahead. Faith. Yes. Excellent. Love that. What else? What else do we use every day? Prayer, faith, uh, worship, uh, the word, confidence. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Hope. Yes, excellent. All things that we can use on a day-to-day basis. I wrote down for myself, I wrote down I use prayer. I try to use patience. I try. I try. Um, I try to be kind. I try to be kind to people. We talked about this uh, with Sister Annette East last Sunday morning when we talked about the joy of the Lord being our strength, right? And how joy in our heart is not based upon the circumstances that happen to us, but our joy comes from the Lord, amen? And so that's a tool that we can use uh, every day. That's a tool that we can use to face these spiritual battles that we're going to have. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. And verse number 10. And the scripture says this. uh, If you want to read along with us. It says, uh, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Uh, If Sister Martha were here tonight in person. I know she's watching online. But she teaches our little ones the full armor of God. I think last Sunday they went over the sword of the spirit. And I know that because Isaac got in trouble in Little Legends and had to give his sword up. Uh, and he tells me, you know, what's funny about Isaac is I don't ever have to ask the, the teacher of Little Legends how he did because Isaac tells on himself. He'll get in the car and immediately say, well, I got in trouble today. I had to give my sword up to Sister Carolyn. So Isaac, Isaac just tells on himself. Uh, I don't know how your Isaac is, but my Isaac, he, he tells on himself. Uh, but uh, I know that Sister Martha teaches the kids this. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. Let me read verse number 11 again. And I want you to tell me what you like about that. Uh, uh, what you like about that particular passage of Scripture. If you want to grab the mic and, uh, and if anybody has a comment so that the guys online can hear it. Um, so it says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. What do you like about that? What do you find interesting about that particular passage of Scripture? Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Anything stand out to you in this passage? Anything stand out to you in in this uh, verse number 11? Go ahead, Sister Carolyn, please. There you go. One thing is armor putting on the full armor you may have to come closer i don't think it's picking you up come on just step up here there you go okay if you put on the full if if you armor you're completely protected sure if you just put on a small piece of the armor like just section you've got parts that are vulnerable yeah and so by that you need everything that God has provided. Right, the de- Absolutely. Excellent. I like that answer. If you couldn't hear, she was saying put on the full armor of God. We may need to come closer this way probably because I think it's not connecting with the uh, receiver. What else? Anybody else like something out of verse 11? There's something very important about verse 11 that I want you to get. And I love what Sister Carolyn said about being completely covered with the armor of God. Let me read it again. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Anybody? Anybody else? What do you like about that? Go ahead, Sharia. Come on up. Um, I was just going to kind of piggyback about putting on the whole Yeah. Don't have Yeah. Okay, she's saying we're vulnerable spiritually. If we just, we'll change the mics, please, and uh, see if the next one will be better. I like that. Go ahead, Brother Amos. 
Use your faith, okay? Okay, and Amos is heading in the right direction, and he said the word that I wanted to zone in on here. Let me read it one more time. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I think a lot of time we as Christians... Uh, forget this part that the scripture tells us that when the enemy comes we will be able to stand against him Uh, a lot of times there's a lot of believers they will just go cower in a corner somewhere and pray oh god just let the devil leave me alone but this scripture right here is telling you that you once you put on the full armor of god and what both of the the christian ladies said uh, is absolutely perfect right we need to be fully covered so that we're not vulnerable but once we're fully covered and we're not vulnerable then we need to understand that we will be able to stand against his schemes and i like that because he is going to have some schemes he's cooking them up right now uh the the this word the, the word tells us right he uh roams around like a lion like a lion seeking whom he may devour and, and he's not gonna stop he's not gonna rest he's doing everything that he can uh against the believers right and against us personally that's what i don't understand about sometimes believers who just let the devil push them around i don't get that like if we had somebody walk up to us in Home Depot or Kroger and, and just punch us in the face, I know the Bible says to turn the other cheek, but uh, at some point you're going to be ready to fight back. I, I, I think about uh, if somebody were to come up and want to harm my kids or harm my wife, guess what? I'm going to be there. I'm going to be right in the middle of it. So why is it when spiritual warfare comes against our family and spiritual warfare comes against our spouse, and spiritual warfare comes against us that we don't fight it as strongly as we would if it was someone else, right? And uh, so this scripture tells us that you need to be able to stand against the enemy because he's going to have schemes, right? Let's keep on uh, reading. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We already know that. There's so much anger and hatred going on right now in this country and, and people can't even get along, right? And I've I've read if, uh, the last few days, if you voted one way, you're, you know, a, you're a, a, a racist or whatever. And if you voted uh, the other way, you're a clown or whatever it may be, right? And uh, we got to understand that that's the enemy stirring things up, okay? We're not, we shouldn't be fighting against one another because the fact of the matter is this. My main goal, you ready? My main goal is to see how many Democrats I can take to heaven with me. Come on now. My main goal is to see how many Republicans I can take to heaven with me. Or how many libertarians, God bless their hearts, right? How many independents. What what am I saying? My main goal is to see how many people I can take to heaven with me. And and it's not fighting upon this earth that's going to do any good, right? So we need to understand that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But it's against the rulers. Look at this. It's against the rulers. And it's against the authorities. And it's against the powers of this dark world. Come on now. The powers of this dark world are at work. We saw it just 24 hours ago with this unbelievable passing of a new law in Oregon that's going to allow families to basically just be destroyed due to drug use. It's going to be destroyed. I have friends that live in Colorado. One of my best friends in the world lives in Colorado. And he told me, Rick, you should see the difference in Colorado now after they legalize the recreational use of marijuana. He said it's unbelievable. And, and this is the kind of trend that's going to take place on the West Coast right now in Oregon. But as this starts to trickle down into other states over there, nothing good can come from nothing good co- Get me some drug addicts in here. Get me some drug addicts in here, and, and, and I'll ask them, did anything good ever come from your drug addiction? And I promise you, 95 to 99% of them are going to say, nope, right? Nope, I'm glad that I got off. And, and that's what's going to happen uh, as we're fighting these authorities and these rulers and these powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. What comes along with this? 
you, there's a lot of people in this room that you've been personally affected in one way or another, whether it's you personally or your family members that have been affected by drug use and drug abuse. Nothing good comes from it. Nothing good. Families are torn apart. People's lives are destroyed. They can't, uh, they can't get a, a leg up once they get, they get hung on this stuff. And, uh, and, and I'm just telling you in my opinion, and I know folks online, uh, you may disagree, folks that watch this later, that may be more on the liberal side than I am, and, and you're entitled to your opinion. But, but you won't change my mind that allowing people to just use drugs at will is a good thing for any part of this nation. And what's happening is, slowly but surely, it's going to start being forced on the church. We've seen a lot of things that the church never thought we'd be dealing with. Never in my life, you know, 20, 25, 30 years ago as a young boy growing up in the church, did I ever think we would be dealing with the issue of uh, homosexuals in leadership and homosexuals in pastorates you know, in, in churches. I never thought, Brother Taylor, we'd see this day. I never thought I would. But slowly but surely, this has been creeping in into the church. Again, I'm not saying that we wouldn't welcome with open arms someone with that lifestyle into this church. But they're not going to be in leadership. And they're not going to be a pastor. Uh, I just believe that's scriptural. Uh, and I believe that's what the Lord would have me as the shepherd of this church. That's the standard the Lord would have me to uphold. But things are going to slowly but surely be pushed upon the church, right? And, and this is one of them. But it comes from powers of the dark world. Why? Because once you get hooked on this kind of thing, once you get hooked on the meth, I, I've, I've talked to several people that have been hooked on it. And, and I've asked them because I've never, I've never experienced anything like that before. And I've asked them, you know, what's it like? Why, why the allure when you know that your life is going to be turned upside down? Why can't you fight it? Why, can't, why do you go back to it, right? And, and, and what I commonly hear is it just doesn't seem like it's me. When I start acting upon a desire for death, it doesn't seem like it's me. And that's where this scripture is talking about spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's what that is, spiritual forces of evil. So look at this, 13, therefore put on the full armor of God, right? So that you will be able to resist the enemy. Or this scripture here in the New International Version says that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, you'll be able to stand or stand firm. So let me ask this question of you tonight. Uh, Brother Taylor, go ahead. You want to add something, please? Come on, go back to verse 11. Let's go back to verse 11. I'm sorry I, I didn't see I you. I wanted to comment on, no, I didn't raise my hand because I resisted. Okay, go ahead. Don't resist. I go wanted for to it. comment on verse 11, but I knew I was going to get ahead of you if I did. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See, you felt it. Go ahead. <laughs> but if you look, verse 11 says stand. Yeah. Verse 13 says withstand. Mm -hmm. Having done all to stand. 14 says stand, therefore. And when we read this word stand, it's not just a matter of us just stand up. We've got to get ready to stand. Yes. And that's what yes. he's saying in verse 13. Having done all to stand. Yep. Now, sometimes we, look, we read that verse and we'll say, oh, man, I've done everything I can today just to stand. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about when we get run down and we're weary and we're, man, I've just been barely able to stand today. No. Just because you join the army and they give you a uniform, you're not ready to fight. True. They make you ready to fight. And this Training. is... Having done all to stand, doing everything you can to make ready. Hide the word in your heart. Pray. Ha have an experience with God. Have faith in God. Have hope in God. Do everything you can to be ready to stand. Then you stand. Yes. But Love you can't it. stand until you've done everything you can to get ready to do it. Yep. And once we've done that, then we can stand. And, and, and that's right there in verse 13. We can just, what we just read, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, right? That's what, that's what Brother Taylor's saying right there. After you have done everything, then you will be able to stand. Uh, what, what have you been taught? Oh, go ahead, honey. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I agree with him. 
but it it also says to and sorry I lost my place but it also says that when that day of evil comes not if that day of evil comes but when that day of evil is coming so you have to be prepared you have to be standing when that before that day comes sure. you see in scripture before Jesus was tempted he fasted and prayed before he was tempted and so if he did it then we need to do it yeah and and i think that's a a, a great point um uh, th that it is going to come right we know that trouble is going to come uh and and so we have to be prepared and be uh able to stand sister martha says uh, each piece of armor has a characteristic or an example of how we are to direct our path the belt of truth uh truthfulness is how you are supposed to live yeah so uh, john mcneil's joining us too from san antonio good to see everybody tonight we got a big crowd here uh, watching online. Sister Martha says that Sarge is already in the bed. We pray for Sarge and, and love Brother Bobby, and we're praying for him. Uh, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. So what have you been taught about spiritual warfare? Uh, in your life, as you were growing up in the church, or, or maybe you know nothing about it, and this is the first time you've ever heard this uh, type of discussion before what, what have you been taught about spiritual warfare or do you have any opinions about spiritual warfare anybody have opinions on spiritual warfare or what have you been taught because i wrote down if you guys don't have any i wrote down um what i've been taught so here's my opinion on it uh my opinion is it's a real battle it's it's real but here's the good thing i have the weapons already to defeat it amen we do have the victory in christ but paul in this particular passage of scripture he called the battle that we're going to face a struggle now the greek word here of struggle is actually tied to the sport of wrestling which reminds us that we don't battle the spiritual forces of evil from a distance come on now so, so this particular passage of Scripture where Paul is saying you're going to struggle, it's not a long-distance struggle. The original context of that word struggle when Paul wrote it in the Greek uh, uh, was like a close hand-to-hand -hand wrestling match. My kids and I, we like to get down in the floor in the living room and just have a royal rumble, right? And, uh, and just wrestle, you know? Uh, who, who didn't like to wrestle when they were younger? And that's what this word is saying. You're going to have a close hand-to-hand -hand type of struggle, only it's not going to be struggling in a physical sense, but it's going to be a supernatural struggle. I don't know about you guys, but I've felt it. I have felt it in my heart lately. There is a supernatural struggle occurring in this nation, occurring uh, between the world and the church, occurring because guess what? Every day that we open our eyes is another day that we're closer to the return of the Lord. And I know what the scripture says, right? That uh, as the time draws near that men will become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. That's what's happening. That's what's occurring. And we're already up on the 8 o'clock hour and I didn't even get a tenth of the way through what, what, what I wanted to get. But I, I did want you to see that uh, people we are going to become lovers of the world more than lovers of God. That's what's taking place. That's what's taking place on the West Coast by passing this ridiculous law that I, I, it just doesn't even make one drop of sense to me. Why will people become lovers of themselves? They would rather just live in their drug addiction than to get their life uh, straightened out, right? And uh, so that, that's what we have to understand and see. We're going to be struggling in a physical context uh, in a supernatural, right, a supernatural um, sphere um, let's uh, let's go ahead and read 14 through 17 because if we can't talk about the uh, the armor of God without knowing what the armor of God is right so let's just we'll just mention them real quick and and uh, call it a night here so stand firm uh, I'm sorry stand your ground is verse 14 put on the belt of truth and put on the body armor of God's righteousness. Right? Uh, verse 15. 
with your feet, or for shoes, as the NLT says, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. What's that scripture saying there? The peace that comes from the good news. What is the good news? The word, the gospel, right? So a lot of people, a lot of times say, hey, how, pastor, how do I get peace in my life? Whew. Right? What, 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 did that, what did that New York Times article say? The reason they're legalizing a lot of those drugs is to help people get over their anxiety and their depression. That's hogwash. How do we get over anxiety and depression? We read our word, which becomes um, uh, uh, the peace, our shoes of peace. Get in the word. That's how we get over that. That's how we fight that stuff. Not through altering our brains and our minds. How irresponsible. How irresponsible of this state to let people just fry their brains and tell them it's okay. But we have the answer. His name is Jesus. Amen. So when you're feeling anxious, that's what that article said. Yeah, we're going to let them do it to help with anxiety and to help with depression. Hogwash. It ain't going to help with nothing. It's going to leave people broke uh, and, and living out on the streets because they're going to throw everything that they got into now because it's legal. They can just throw everything they got into participating in these drugs that are going to really just uh, rot their minds. I mean, that's just my opinion on it. Let's, let's finish here. Um, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, verse 16, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one i like that no matter what he throws our way god has given us the shield that can extinguish don't don't you love that that right there this this scripture here has always been one of my favorite parts of the actual uh, armor of god because i like this because it extinguishes the arrows it doesn't just block them right it doesn't just block them, but it knocks them down and puts the fire out. A lot of people have a language that they use, right? They say, I'm burning the candle at both ends, or uh, I'm running around like my house is on fire. Uh, and, and I like that. And the enemy tries to get us so anxious and so worked up, right? And, and we're running around like our house is on fire, or burning the candle at both ends. And this scripture here says, if you have the shield of faith, that it will extinguish the fiery arrows of the enemy i love that and verse 17 says this take the helmet and we'll end here tonight take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god don't you love it tonight i'm telling you we have uh, sister martha says there's a warfare in the upper heavens because uh, michael the archangel uh was late in answering daniel's prayer uh you'd have to uh, elaborate on that sister martha i'm not uh, uh, but uh, she said, I think it was Daniel. I'm, I'm sorry, Sister Martha, I'm not on the same uh, wavelength with you there, but uh, I do appreciate it. Say it again. Oh, oh, to get a response. Okay. There you go. Brother Taylor, see? That's why, you know, the Aggies are good uh, for something. Praise God. He said that the delay, so he got me. No, he got me with you, Sister Martha. The delay there of, of, of 21 days or whatever it was there uh, that said I've been struggling in that time. And that's so true, right? Uh, and it can feel like a struggle. Listen, what we've gone through, and I'll end with this, what we've gone through over these last six, seven months, right? It feels like just a never-ending struggle. And now in Europe, countries are shutting down again. Who knows with what's going to happen over the next uh, 48 hours in this country. By the time January rolls around, who knows what's going to happen even here. We might be on lockdown again. Uh, and I, I, it just feels like a struggle, right? It just feels like a struggle. But if we put on the full armor of God, we will be prepared to face anything. You want to say something, Sister Gibbons? Please, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mom. We want to hear her here. The scripture says that we are aware of the devices yes. of, the, of Satan. Uh -huh. Jesus fought the devil with the word. He said, devil, it is written. Mm -hmm. And I believe with all my heart that it's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost. And what is that going to take? prayer Amen. we cannot get by without, without prayer. prayer absolutely and and uh, 
God has always fought our battles, and he always will if we just depend upon him. Hallelujah. That's a good one. What a great way to end it tonight. Amen. Brother Taylor, go ahead. Bring us home. Just, uh, I'm, I'm the kind that when I start studying something, dig in and say, okay, why, why are, you, are we talking about this? Yeah. Every piece of this armor has, I mean, he's telling us a reason here, but if you start studying it and really get into it, it really brings it to life to us. Part of the helmet tonight. Sure. If I could just Please take, just take, take your liberty, yes. Not that, and I said, "Why the helmet of salvation? The part of salvation should be whatever's covering your heart. That's our salvation is in our heart. True, Jesus is our heart. Helmet of salvation. Such a time as this. He attacks the mind." helmet of salvation it protects our our thinking it protects our fe the Amen. fear that's good all the things that's going on in our world around us today that we have become so fearful of and so uh confused about and and whatever else you want to explain it as when we put on that helmet of salvation it's like it on his headphones now when Rebecca puts on her headphones. I'm not hearing all the clutter. He's, she's not hearing all the clutter in our room. We have to get her attention. Right. Same with Isaac. And yeah. the same thing when we put on the helmet of salvation and allow the Lord to protect our mind and to keep our mind in his keeping, that a lot of this confusion and fear that's out there that's put out before us, we go back to the against powers. All these things he would bring against us, that helmet of salvation protects us and keeps us from listening to all the clutter and all the stuff. But yeah. we're, we've got the word of the Lord that's speaking to us uh, and keeping us in his care and keeping our mind stayed upon him. Yeah, and, that, and that's perfect. And what a great way to close out tonight because what it, we, we talked about this scripture maybe last Wednesday, right? Uh, uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. And that's where the transformation comes in the renewing of our mind. Uh, and that's why that helmet of salvation is, is so vital. What a great point. Hey, we uh, love you and uh, glad you're here. Glad you joined us tonight. Sister Prudence said everybody sounds good and she loves that y'all had the mic tonight. So we'll have to keep uh, doing that. Now, next week will be a little different format because I'll be out of town at uh, general board meetings in, in uh, Bedford. Uh, but Brother Taylor... Uh, we'll be here bringing the word unless uh, S Sister Taylor has a procedure that comes up or something, and then it'll be uh, uh, pa Pastor Dave. So uh, we'll see you next Wednesday night right here on Bethel Church Live. But before that, we'll be here Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, for our Sunday morning Sunday school, and then 11 a.m. for worship and the word. We love you guys. Thank you for being a part of our time tonight, and may God uh, bless you very, very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.